Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong best friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Link. <laughs> and I'm Rhett. This week <laughs> at the round table of dim lighting, we are continuing our conversation about the Enneagram. I do think that if you didn't listen to the last episode, you should listen to it before this one, but if you're not the kind of person that wants to do that, if you're an eight, an Enneagram eight, and you're like, screw you, I'm gonna do what I wanna do, then you can listen to this one, it's fine, because I do think it will stand alone. We're gonna be talking more about how the numbers relate to each other, specifically how a three, that's me, a one, that's Link, relate to each other, some of the strengths and the weaknesses in that pairing, and we'll also talk a little bit about some other relationships in our lives, probably just our marriages, and uh, mm -hmm. and then maybe what we can do to grow based on what we've learned. That sounds like a good plan. I will measure the success of this podcast based on that criteria if we, at the end. I'm sure you will. Before we uh, get any further, we do wanna remind you that episode four of Ronstadt is out now, and in this episode, Ronstadt and Faye, his love interest, uh, finally get some alone time. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So if you're into, you know, alone time, people getting alone time and listening to it, <laughs> <laughs> uh, episode four is for you. Of course, listen to episodes one, two, and three before is, you get to is, four. Is that where the mouth sounds came in? Uh, actually, I think the mouth sounds come in a little bit later. But boy, but well, there are some mouth sounds. Oh my goodness! I'm glad I wasn't there for the recording of those mouth sounds. I heard about it. Yeah. But I think I think I, we have some B-roll footage maybe at some point we're releasing. Not, but we're not gonna cut to it now. No, nope. No, no. Um, I, I wanted to kick this thing off just by talking about how, I, how I've been thinking about the previous episode. Um, it, it just struck me, you know, I had to, and I mentioned in the episode that I had to go to the dentist right yeah, after right. we recorded right. last week's episode. And, and I, so, I it, the appointment was pr pretty close to the end of the episode. As a matter of fact, I knew I had to be there, so I was kind of like shutting down the making a decision. It's like, hey, I I got to get out of here. Let's we got to start wrapping this thing up. So I, in in as graceful a way as possible, I tried to get us to that point so that I could get to my dentist appointment. And then when the show was over, I immediately left, got my car, and like rushed over there. And I just started to observe, because I was totally in the headspace of observing my oneness, that the entire way to the to the dentist, I was just just beating myself up about- and, For ending and, the podcast? And analyzing it. Well, that was that's where it started. Oh. Like I was like, I really don't like how I had to truncate our conversation and you know, if if Red did that to me, I would feel like you know that I was being rushed, and that instead of processing and having like a nice, gentle landing to the podcast, which is always important to me, we had to rush it, and I just felt like, man, this is my fault. And I'm like driving down the road, and I'm like, you know, I'm gonna text Red right now, and I just want to apologize wow. for having to, you know, having to speed through the ending, and. I think the reason why I wanted to do that is a very one reason, and that's, okay, I didn't meet the standard of how I wanted, how I envisioned the episode wrapping up. What it would, not necessarily what would be said, but what it would feel like. That that was actually the criteria that, that I felt like was missing. I didn't like that, and I didn't like, I you know, I assumed that you were thinking the exact same thing, but I was projecting that, and I was like, I want to apologize because I want to pre acknowledge I want to acknowledge that I know that. So instead of receiving the criticism later, because that'll really hurt. That really hurts the one when it's, hey, this wasn't, this wasn't good enough. This didn't meet the standard. It's like, oh yes, I I knew that. I was going to say that first, you know. So that that was the first thing. And then I start getting into the whole thing, you know. And I'm I'm sitting there. And by the time I get to the dentist. I'm experiencing this this anger, this frustration, and I sit down and she hands me an iPad and she's like, I know you've been coming. And you broke it. <laughs> I know you've been, well almost. Well, you broke it over your knee. She was like, I know you've been coming here for years, but 
um, we are on a new system and I need you to re-enter all your information in again. Oh, that makes you mad. And I was like, seriously? And so it's like, create a username, create a password. Oh, this is the worst thing. And I'm like, okay, I'm supposed to create a password on your device. How am I supposed to store that password? I have a system for storing my passwords Ooh, yeah. so that they, I don't, have to remember what they are and they're all unique. Yeah, this is bad news for a one. And then I open up my app to to, to create the password and then I'm gonna manually transfer it to their oh, dumb iPad. That's the worst. So, and then what? Maybe maybe, they're, maybe they'll have my password, I don't know. Yeah, and, and you've accidentally to, used it for something else and next thing you know, your dental hygienist is getting money from your bank account. It, yes, siphoning my bank account. Yeah. I have trust issues. I don't with, trust hygienists. With, <laughs> you know, they see, if, you, if you spend that much time in somebody else's mouth, Something's gotta happen to your brain, <laughs> to your moral compass. I mean, compass. if there's anybody you should trust is someone who's shoving both hands in, their, in your mouth. I think they've gained so much trust from people that they exploit it. My app, my password app wouldn't work. I tried it three, four times. I'm sitting there oh, and now man. I'm just steaming. Hmm. And I said, you know, I stood up and I, and I said, you know what? Can we just do this next time? I'm just, I'm having a day that makes it where I be, I'm basically incapable of creating, <laughs> of filling out this information. This reminds me of the time my mom took my kids to the place, the trampoline place where you jump. Yeah. And you know how you have to like fill out a computer screen that just like registers the child there it, and says that if a they waiver die, it. it's your fault. Yeah. She got to that screen because my kids tell the story. They're like, Mom and I got to the screen and she started realizing she was gonna have to like put our names in this screen and she was like, Y'all do this. <laughs> she was like, I'm not about to do this. Yeah, I had gotten to such a, I, I had gone into super anal critical mode and analysis mode of the last episode that, I mean, the app didn't work. That wasn't my fault. And But it kind of saved me because I'm, I'm gonna switch dentists anyway. After that, hmm. I don't wanna put my information in here. This is a good point to break off from you guys. Well, you've been talking, we go to the same dentist and you've been talking about it. Well, the for, hygienist, for, for switch, switching the hygienist, I, again, the hygienist doesn't follow the strict protocols that I've come to uh, expect. Yeah, because like, when you told me. There's no me, flossing. The last time I went, she didn't floss. Well, that's your job. But she told, when you told me that you were thinking about switching, I was like, this would never cross my mind that I would switch dentist. Unless like the dentist was, you know, like asking me to commit crimes or something. But, and then I told Jesse, I was like, Link's thinking about, he, he thinks we, we, this dentist is bad now. And I'm like, and she's like, how? <laughs> and like both of us could oh, not understand. Well, I, I can answer that question. <laughs> okay, how we, we hear it? I wanna hear the pitch for why I should switch. Well, because I've experienced meticulous dentistry where they're like, hmm. they're measuring your gums and they're like flossing your teeth and like, uh, giving you lectures on your gum health. And for the last two times I went, none of that happened. Well, maybe you've improved. Maybe, no, maybe they, you've they, gotten better. There was no assessment. Hmm. Well, there I was, got an assessment last time and it was bad. It changed my, it changed my ways, man. And the, the, I, I floss every day because of it. The people in there are different. Uh, they've changed. And, and I mean, they're, they're literally different. They're literally different oh. people. <laughs> and I think it's changed hands and they don't have the same procedures. Okay, all right. And I wanna, I wanna feel the pain because I wanna know that I've done everything I could to, for, for, my, for my health. I want, right. I, want their, I want them to hold themselves to the highest standard because yeah. only then can I relax. When I'm like, hold on, I'm walking out and they didn't do this, that, oh, and the man. other. Teeth are gonna fall out like It a is a very dream. one thing, right? Yeah. And, and plus they, they weren't really, they also weren't that nice. Oh, okay, interesting. Well, I wasn't thinking any of that about the episode. Uh, I was not thinking. Uh, I was. You know, I was here, thinking here, a lot of other things too. But here, I don't here, go here's into the it. interesting thing. There was one. Nothing? There was one thing that I was thinking. I'm going to save it. Uh, I'm going to save it until we get into the conversation about ones and threes because I was like, it's interesting when I read about this because I felt this. At, the, at one point during the episode, and it's the only, I mean, it's not really a criticism, it's just, I, it's a, something you said that made me feel a certain way that I think is indicative of the one and the three, yes. but I was not thinking at all about you cutting the conversation off, because I knew that you had to go. And I know that we, and, and we had a part two. And I also was not um, thinking about like, oh, that didn't go well, or that could have been better. 
But what I was thinking, apart from what I'm gonna get to later, mm -hmm. is I can tell that Link is having a difficult time with the, this podcast. There's tension. Yeah. Because anytime, there, it's not just a conversation, and it's like there's information that needs to be presented. And even, like, so we typically don't have many conversations about the conversation that we're gonna have, right? But when we're gonna present information, it's one thing I'm just like, okay, this is your episode where you're gonna talk about your deconstruction story. Yeah. And then it's just like, it's all in your head and it's all on your plate and you just do it. And then vice versa. And we kind of know that the other guy is there to be supportive and to be a listener. But there are fewer and far more f and further between, there are these episodes where it's like, I've got something and you've got something and we have to coordinate the presentation. Yeah. And every conversation we have about that is tense. There's a tension in that conversation and I'm like, Link is really, he's very tense about us coordinating this podcast presentation. Yes. And it's like, and I and I want you to just relax. I want you to I want you to just relax so you can enjoy it. Getting on the same page is what I think gets me to that point. And if it's not, and if that doesn't happen, well, this is the other thing that I said I wasn't going to go into. But like, <laughs> hey, we should go into this. It, yeah, you're exactly well, we're gonna right. Talk, you know, maybe we should maybe we should move ahead and and talk about the threes and the ones because I think it actually will illuminate the for people who are like, what are you guys talking about? You seem crazy. Seem like a couple of dental hygienists. <laughs> I'm really throwing dental hygienists under the bus. I love them. They're great. I don't think they're criminals. They don't get enough credit because I was being, the, I was the, dentist, the dentist just comes in and like looks at your teeth yeah. and like gives a thumbs up. Dentists like, are suckers. He they're they're he, the ones who suck. He brings out a couple of tools. Yeah, yeah right. He, but yeah. it's the hygienist they're that does the real. I mean, all that measuring, all the stuff that I'm critical of is of the hygienist because like they're the key in my mind. Right, 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 right. Um, and I did vent some of this to Christy and like you talked to Jesse, I talked to Christy and then Jenna came by and since she was sitting in the room like, Christy was she like, got it. you know, Link's not happy about the episode and, I, and uh, I was actually encouraged, Jenna what you said was very helpful because what she said was, I thought it was just a classic exhibition of each of your numbers in full force in that episode. There we and go. That's, and that made me feel better, because I felt like it redeemed everything that I was critical of, because it was like, I was critical of things where it's like, oh, I was too controlling, or this didn't, or you didn't meet my expectation, or my standard, and it, or it didn't go the way that I felt. You know, all of that, I'm, I, I'm, I'm assuming as they listened, there was like a smile on people's faces that was like, because Jenna said this, they, we don't even know how much we are like going into our numbers, you know? Yeah, we're very, we are, some people are not as pronounced and being in their numbers, so self but we are. It's so ironic that we were talking about it, yet having this level of like, I was more aware of it, but still, it's, it's, it's a lot of work to be aware and to um, to respond to it. And I think that's the other thing through the lens of our number interactions that we can talk about like our paths to growth and integrating this this information. Yeah, but let's take a, a, a quick break to talk about the uh, the hat right there. Okay. The mythical trucker hat. This, this is, is my favorite hat. We, we actually requested that this be made because let's just be honest, uh, we were making hats in the mythical store that were, uh, and we still are. They're like dad hats, right? And they're the cool hats that the kids wear, right? But we are actually dads. And so dads don't wear dad hats. Dads, no irony! Dads wear old school high crown trucker hats that are made of foam. And when it gets hot, it's got built in AC. Right, I mean this is a classic hat. Uh, and it, if you throw it overboard your dad boat, it floats. It floats. Well, I think it floats for a while. Until it, until it. Maybe it, 20 it minutes kinda or like so. It's kind of like a sponge. Mythical.com. Um, I thought we could just start reading through the this relationship description. Enne the Enneagram Institute has a really, uh, again, I've already plug the website, but I, I love the website because of the way it's organized and it's simple and you don't have to read a book to kind of understand the basics of the Enneagram. But one of the things that uh, they have is this section under the learn tab where it says uh, relationships 
and then you can click on your type and then you can click on the type, uh, another type and see how those two types interact. Mm -hmm. And so this is the Enneagram one, the reformer, that's Link, with the Enneagram three, the achiever, that's me. And if you click on. And it doesn't matter whether you go from one to three or three to one, it goes to the same page. Okay, good. Because uh, I could tell that you were you were like, are we going? Are we doing this? Oh, that, the right I, I was way? just curious if one's first is it is it no, something different? It, to say? it just it it, it it I mean, it has them in norm, numerical order on each page. Read through it, and I'll amen it, or or I'll be like, maybe not. Yeah, we'll just see where, where we relate. And when we get to the thing that I was talking about earlier, I'll tell you what it was. Maybe okay. maybe you'll anticipate it. Uh-huh. Enneagram ones and threes are both competent serious-minded and idealistic. Yes. This serious-minded thing, yeah. which I think we've shared a little bit before. Okay, yes, we're comedians and we may cut the fool. <laughs> Constantly. Uh, as we interact with each other in front of you. But as, and Jenna could probably tell you this. Um, if you just hang out with us as we're doing our work, it's not fun. We're not, our creative process is not fun. We're not like these fun, happy-go-lucky guys constantly making jokes, constantly laughing. Like It is like two people working on a serious problem, even I'll, if it's a really dumb thing that we're working on. I'll go beyond that. I'll say even when we are just hanging out with our friends, if, if a mythical beast were to hang out as a fly on the wall with, with us and our friend group, I think they would be surprised at how Serious like, we are. How serious we are. <laughs> you know, it's like we, I mean, we have a good time, but it's not like, I, I think they may think that we would be on, but we're not. And I think the thing is, is that if we were as unserious <laughs> as we tend to be when we're in our performance mode, all the time. We couldn't live with ourselves. You wouldn't be watching, there would be no podcast, there would be no oh. mythical entertainment. None of this stuff that we've been doing for over a decade would actually have happened. Which, okay, let's get into that. Because this, back to the website, this is a highly task-oriented relationship with both partners driven to hard work and to be intensely aware when, individually and collectively, they are not measuring up to their own expectations and high standards. Yeah. So. Goes without saying, it's pretty self-explanatory and very true of both of us. But I would say we push ourselves. And we, I think we're pretty good at supporting each other. Like even in a recent conversation we had, I was talking to you about like how sensitive I am to pulling my weight mm -hmm. at, at this, as I described a few weeks ago, we're at this phase, creative phase where a lot of things are speculative and we're just you know we're just writing things we're just kind of pursuing concepts where we're not executing and producing as much or taking one project through the whole thing and i was kind of i was experiencing uh just feeling like i i want to make sure that you know that i am sensitive to me pulling my own weight and your response was well i'm not thinking about that because you're thinking about you know, holding yourself accountable to to, to what it is you want to achieve. But we're, so we're both good at that. We're both hard on ourselves. Yeah. And we're actually not that hard on each other. Uh, I know that I project that sometimes, uh, but it's not actually the case because we drive ourselves so much. Yeah, and, and we also have been in this relationship for a very long time and in this business relationship for a very long time so that there's this level of trust where it's not, I'm no longer like, we're not feeling it out anymore. And to be like, all right, what's he doing with his time? You know, it's like there's not there's, right. Both parties can bring selflessness, self discipline, good work habits, and the ability to put aside their personal feelings for the sake of the objective good that needs to be done. Both types are used to working so hard that they often succeed, garnering admiration from those around them and attaining places of leadership and responsibility. The one in three combination can be so dazzlingly, daz, dazzlingly accomplished. Dazzlingly accomplished. Dazzlingly accomplished. Dazzlingly accomplished. High energy, extraordinarily competent and impressive both individually and collectively. Uh, so we really, st we really stumbled into something good, man. I mean, it's not like when we were in first grade, we were looking through the class to see who we could team up with to, cre to create like a, uh, a digital 
studio and aspire to a media empire <laughs> in the future. I mean, I wasn't like, who can who can team up with me to make us dazzlingly, what? Uh, accomplished. It's not like I didn't say it three times. <laughs> but I, you know, you know, people ask the question a lot of times. Now, and first of all, we're going to get to the bad parts of our relationship and the and the and the pitfalls of the three and the one. It would just it kind of starts with the positive, so we'll stay there for a second. So, yeah, let's dazzle a little, man. Um, a lot of time, you know, a lot of people are in this business that we're in, right? Um, but a, a a minority of people who are in the creator business sort of take it to the level that we've taken it to. And I'm not I'm not patting ourselves on the back. I'm just saying that like, not, there's plenty of creators who are just like, guys, I don't want a company with 100 people. That's not what I want. I just want to create. Yeah. And I think that maybe even sometimes against our own interests, hmm. um, we just- Because we can, we should. Right, we're just like, this could get bigger. This could be more successful. Yeah. We could make this company bigger. We could have a bigger idea. We could take this further. And there's very little evaluation of whether or not we should, it, it was, yeah. it, it's just a given that that's what's gonna happen. And it's been that way since the beginning and that's why it's continued to grow because it's almost a maniacal, at sometimes pathological and self-harming <laughs> mm. um, instinct to just keep pushing. Because neither it's, one, it's, neither person in the yeah. relationship, they're, they're, now we'll talk about how the threes and the ones balance each other, but neither one in the relationship is really holding you back from continuing to move forward in general. There could be some frustrations, which we'll talk about, but it isn't like the one is like, I don't wanna move forward. The one is like, I wanna move forward, but in a particular way. And the three is just like, I wanna move forward because when we move forward, we it'll get, be good. We get there, <laughs> yeah, I think right. is really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we move forward, we get there. Um, they both strive after excellence, both as an ideal and as something to personally embody. Sometimes they succeed so well that this pairing virtually glows with self-confidence and the thrill of their own talents. They strive to make <laughs> each other proud of them. Someone the other can look up to and show off to his or her friends and family. They enjoy planning and organizing their lives. You know, lives. sometimes I invite you over and I'm like, show look them. at my friend. <laughs> They're right. They enjoy planning and organizing their lives, dividing up responsibilities after seeing who is objectively better at which tasks. Hmm. Both thrive on respect and give each other personal space. So this idea, and this is this is really interesting, it talks a little bit more specifically about this in a second, but the idea, in comparison to you, uh, in so much of my life is in relationship to you and in contrast to you, I've kind of g given off this air of like, I'm not, I don't really, I'm, my life is not organized, I'm not a planner, Link's the planner. But again, in the spectrum of organization and efficiency and planning and pragmatism, I'm actually, I would say in the top 10 percentile of organized efficiency, and I know this because I live in a family of all the, my, the, all the members of my family are on the opposite end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And not my wife, perfect example. Not a planner, not organized. She's a procrastinator, and yeah, we, she, and she will gladly admit that we both know our way around a spreadsheet. It's just the fact that well, I might be in the top ten percentile, you're in the top one percentile. Do you yep. know what I'm saying? So in contrast, there seems like a big difference, but we're both actually in this almost engineering mindset when we mm -hmm. when, the way that we approach and the way that we schedule things and this whole idea about dividing things up. This is something that especially over the past like five, six years, right? we've begun to get very, just because there's so many things going on, we had to do it out of necessity. We have these meetings where we're like evaluating all that's on our plate and it's just like, you take this, I'll take this, you take this, I'll take this. There are struggles associated with like dividing things up, but but it's overwritten by, there's like a, there's a, it's freeing. There's kind of comfort in knowing Oh yeah, yeah. It's like you can you can take this. I'll take and I'll take this kind of a thing. Right. Um, as long as there's as as there's enough and there's things that we can both get excited about that are different. That's especially when it works. Right. Which is what you were getting at earlier. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't. It, it's not that clean. Yeah. There are only two other equally goal oriented pairings. A one with a one. Mm -hmm. And a three with a three. Now I think I experience a one with a one, because I think that Stevie's a one. I think that Stevie's a three. 
Really? Yep. Wait, I mean, she. I don't think she's looked into this because she's not. And, and you know, okay. So I've always I don't know thought, that she's into. I've it. always thought that Stevie was a one. And then when I dove back into reading about a three, I was like, you know what? I think that Stevie's a three. Well, only she can say for sure. Yeah, and and and, and, and you, again, you shouldn't t- you, you shouldn't pigeonhole you somebody else. You can't put you but. can't put a number on somebody, and that's why it's up to her to. But it's interesting because, but go ahead because she definitely has one tendencies, and ones and threes can be mistaken for each other a lot of times. Yeah, I I think when it comes to like our creative interactions, to me, she feels m- more like the way that I interact systematically. Like if we're thinking about ideas, I tend to think of structure first and like I I create boxes to then check. It's like, all right, in order for this to be a good idea, it has to meet these criteria. And and, and, and sometimes we get so bogged down in that that we don't come up with any ideas. Whereas, and and maybe that's less of a 3-1 thing and, and just more of a creative mindset going on, but like, well, it's things like that that I. She's very systematic. The reason I th- I think that she's a three uh, is because no no offense to ones ones have a tendency to give superfluous feedback and Stevie mm. never gives superfluous feedback and also threes tend to have this almost uh, again to the detriment of their own health commitment to doing 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 mm. and that's Stevie and and also yeah. threes have a tendency to do things themselves before they give you the opportunity to do them yourself. I do that and Stevie does Stevie's gotten better at that because she's so good at so many things. She and had, ones also do that. It, yeah, so it's I but I do think I mean when you when you add her into the mix, you see how it still works cuz it's 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 within this framework that you yeah. and I And whether she's a one or a three, it still it works the three of us With together the three of us, cre- yeah. create this. Um, it's like a, pr- it's like approaching a tornado. I believe that I could imagine what it would be like for somebody on the outside if we were in the middle of a creative process mm-hmm. to be like, I don't, I don't know how to step into this tornado. I feel like if I step into it, I might get hit by a piano. You know what I'm saying? Because there's an intensity. Yeah. I would love to, to know. The process. I would love to know because then I start to think. I wonder what Jacob is. Like Stevie works so closely with Jacob. I think and Jacob, then I start to think. I think Jacob is a one. I start to think, you know, it's like maybe maybe we need to drop everything and everybody needs to go. Every all we, we did Strengths Finder at one point, a long time ago. Okay, so goal oriented pairings: the one and the one, and the three and the three. Although since these both are same type pairings, they typically have blind spots that these combinations will need to be aware of. Because the one three is a mixed pair, this produces a powerful coalition that is capable of dealing both with ideals and with practical matters. Um, They will try to solve problems in the relationship by discussing the issues involved, since neither likes emotionally charged bickering or unresolved issues. So we can talk about that because this is something that, I mean, again, these are a lot of these are principles that would be true to any personality combination, but, we have had sort of a hypersensitivity to having the conversation about the conversation, to having the meta conversation about our relationship. And it usually, we, we're both so busy and so focused that sometimes more time than needs to pass passes before we have another one of those conversations. That's a conversation about our relationship. Yeah. But this is something that happens on a very regular basis. and in the friendships and the business relationships that we have sort of been exposed to, uh, that's the advice we always give is that you gotta have a conversation about the conversation, you gotta talk about your relationship. And yeah. I, uh, my uh, instinct or my, my observation is that a lot of people have not made the decision to have the conversation about their relationship and it has not worked out. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing that strikes me about everything that we've read is that it, I mean, it, it it resonates so much with us in a professional setting and like having these dreams that we wanna accomplish and goals that we're going after. Like, so for like, it's a good combination for people starting a, starting a business or, or, or working closely in partnership. Now, I mean, the Enneagram Institute makes a point that, 
like if you're talking about any type of relationship, it, you can make any combination work. It's not mm. like, well you shouldn't, you shouldn't be yeah, in business yeah. with, with, if you're a certain number, you should only be in business with other numbers. No, that's not the case. It's just there's certain strengths and certain pitfalls with all the combinations yeah. and also with um, you know, relational partnerships. I think partnerships. it's huge in marriage, which we'll get to in a second. But right. Exactly, it's, it doesn't mean you can't be in a marriage or a relationship or a business partnership with another number. It's just it brings a level of awareness to, and I guarantee you that nine times out of 10, if you were like, my, I'm a so-and-so and my wife is a so-and-so, I'm a so-and-so, my business partners are so-and-so, and then you read about these and you're like, oh damn, we always go back to these same trouble spots. And I think for, well we haven't even started reading the trouble spots, but I do think that we have a tendency to get so focused on, on the goals and that we're headed towards that we could neglect our friendship. And that's the, it, the health of it. And that's specifically listed in here. And I feel like we're doing good if we have the conversation about the converse, how we converse and how we relate once a quarter, but then if it, if it goes to only twice a year or once a year, then it, those conversations get to, they, they tend to take they a take lot longer. more time. And then you get, and we do get through it because it's, it's, it's the same conversation. You know, it's just, yeah. you know, oh, it's just, it's nine months later than the, than the right. last time we had it. Right. Ones help threes to be more grounded and realistic. Threes help ones stretch themselves and not be so perfect, perfectionistic. They are both industrious and persistent, efficient and concerned with excellence and with making a real difference in the world. I mean, again, this is like, I feel like somebody is reading the exact, this, they're reading our mail. But let's talk about the trouble spots though. Yeah. To, we've, we've congratulated ourselves enough, even for a three. I'm so dazzled, I need to, need to take some of the sheen off. If this relationship gets into trouble, it is often over time commitments, lack of emotional attachment to each other, and mm. a creeping sense of competition. Now, as you remember very well, we did a whole, um, we did a whole episode where I was accusing you of being as competitive as me, uh, and I, Again, I regret some of the things that I said <laughs> and the stance that I took in that. But I do think that, uh, and again, I think that we're learning more about what ha what's going on inside your mind when you do things that externally present themselves as competitive. Yeah. Um, but that whole pulling each other's weight and um, pu pulling we're pulling your own pulling, weight. pulling your, yeah pulling your, your <laughs> own weight and like the don't pull my weight the balance that we have in the things that we do yeah um definitely speaks to this we both are like i don't okay we're doing a meeting where we're talking to everybody in the company well i want 50% of the words don't you <laughs> you know what i'm saying and it's like there's always been this it's like okay i'll take this point then you take this point i'll take this point let's we just divide everything up in that way yeah and as we talked about in that competition discussion, which by the way was never, we never knew we were gonna have it, it just happened. Uh, it was, but that was an interesting, that was an interesting moment. But yeah, I was just trying to explain that like, okay, if you take our, the meeting, it's like we, yeah, we set up this system where it's, we're gonna divide up how we're gonna present everything to all of our employees and then that becomes a, a and to me, the, the reason is uh, it's a, it's value to, pre to present a united front and for them to hear from both of us and kind of, you know, n know where we're coming from. Yeah. And then there's certain things that one of us can uh, feel more passionately about or can communicate more concisely or more effectively. So there's a, there's a divide and conquer type thing. And then all of it, in my mind, goes into uh, the definition of what means the meeting went well when it's over, and I'm analyzing it the second we turn off the the, the camera uh, on the video chat right, or right. walk out of the room when we get back into the board room. Right. I hesitate to then say, and I think you think this way because I also think we tend to characterize the other person's motives. It's really hard to do that because our motives are so different that it's very easy to mischaracterize it's in a way that seems like 
for, well, for me that I'm being critical of you. Yeah. And, and you might uh, try to characterize my motives in a way that seems, again, you would have to say, is it competitive? Is there more of a comparison there? It's like. I, I think but, that I, I, well, we'll get into that in a second when we talk about how threes respond to ones and ones respond to threes. Okay. But my, and I think where my mind is out at after a meeting like that is not, and I think this is pretty, you know, enlightening, given what you just said, is you said you're, con you're immediately analyzing how the meeting went. And what I am analyzing is what our people think about us as leaders. Mm -hmm. there, I'm, the meeting is uh, a sort of a conduit for them to perceive us in the right way as leaders, right? Yeah. And th that's what the three goes to. The right. three goes to is how did we, and how did I, Individually, now I'm not, it's not just like, how did I, I'm not, I'm mature enough at this point for it not to be, how did I come across versus Link? It's more, how did we come across as leaders? D did we did we put a picture out there? And again, there's the whole, self, there's this deception thing which the three deals with, which is we kind of just pass right over whether or not we are good leaders and get right into do people think we're good leaders because that's what's really important, right? And again, this is not a conscious process. This is like this intuitive, emotional, sort of under the surface thing that if I really step back and think about where my mind was at after a meeting, I'm like, oh, I was actually hoping that our employees would walk away from this meeting and think, these guys are engaged. These guys these guys care about us and that you know, they're giving, they're, they're putting, you know, uh, Establishing a great vision for our company and thumbs up to those guys. Good, good, good leaders, good bosses. And and all of that resonates with me, but I go back to the the way that I know that we've gotten there is by measuring the process the, the, the process. Right. And the, I think it's more about the specifics. I think it's more about the performance. Right. And again, the funny thing is, is that when you sit and look at the external execution, it's a pretty Pretty similar external yeah. result. You know what I'm saying? What we do it. We do have your ultimate goal is not to look good. Is to do the things that yeah yeah. And my ultimate goal is not to have a perfect meeting. Our ultimate goal is to uh, lead wisely. Yeah. And, but and my belief, my underlying belief, my orientation in the world is that a big part of effective leadership is them just thinking that we're good leaders. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, and I'm not saying that's true. I think you need to, you, you, I'm not actively trying to deceive and trying to lie. It's just, again, I'm being vulnerable about the way the threes work. Okay, so there's two sections here and instead of, we'll, it still take forever if we go through. What I wanna do is I wanna read the way ones tend to think about threes Mm. which would get to this paragraph and then just let you respond and say, this resonates, this doesn't resonate, and then we'll do the same. Okay. Ones tend to find threes too workaholic, pragmatic, and too concerned with their image and their reputation rather than with principle. Ones can see threes as tending to cut corners in ethical matters, willing to exaggerate or fudge the truth in order to achieve whatever they're after. They can also become critical of threes if they change their goals pragmatically, dropping efforts or switching positions when something does not work for them. Ones may also have issues with threes attempting to reinterpret ethical questions and with not owning up to their personal behavior, including their behavior regarding fidelity in the relationship itself. All of the middle part about like, are you, are you deceitful? Are you doing things underhanded? Are you are you lying to people? Are, do you do I question your integrity? It's like no, no. Uh, um, you know, we're both we're both good boys. <laughs> <laughs> your, your mom would say, and my nana would say, y'all are such good boys, good boys, and you you work so hard. I'm so proud of y'all. That's what what nana says. But the, I mean, the very beginning. The very first thing and the very last thing resonates. So the very first thing of like, okay, is he doing this for effect? Because you know, to uh, image management, mm -hmm. I think that 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 comes up for me. Yeah, and I, and this is why when we go back to that that conversation about competition, 
you tend to uh, analyze someone else's behavior according to the way that you're thinking about it. So in other words, like what we talked about before, like if you come to work with a weird pair of pants on and it's like, those yeah. pants are short and wa ba baggy. Yeah. And you know, objectively, they don't look good is what I'm thinking, right? <laughs> okay. But they are quirky and cool and fashion forward. And so what I interpret is Link is trying to seem fashion forward. So again, because if I were to put those pants on, I would be doing it to seem fashion forward, right? I would be doing it to maintain an image of like, hey, I'm like trying, I'm mixing things up and look at what, look at what Rhett's doing now about his, appearance in some way. Oh, Rhett grew his hair out. He must be doing that because he wants to be a guy with long hair, right? And I, that's something I definitely fight against in myself, but then I yeah. interpret any choice that you make in the same way. I, I think this this gets to the, to the thing that I thought was the moment in last week's podcast, and maybe it wasn't it, so I'll just throw this out there. Uh, the thing that rubbed me the wrong way was I yeah I felt like the you know the typically an ear biscuit conversation is more of a conversation but because it's more because of the way that we set up last week and we're bouncing back and forth and we each have things that we want to convey um you you directed more of the things that you were saying to the audience than to me and hmm. uh you know at, um, there's two things. One, I've, I, I recognize that, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way because I was like, is like he seems really caught up in in really getting something across. And is that I don't know is that related to what you were saying about then how you would be perceived? You know, I the thing that I've I've said for years is like people are like what's your pet peeve about Rhett? And I say, well, he, he he's a know it all. You know, it pricked it pricked that. Uh, pet peeve again right. because, and I was I was thinking, well maybe there's an image management part of it. Like he's got this thing that he he wants to come across in a certain way, and I could be totally wrong. It's just I was in my own head about it. But I and I think the bigger thing, and maybe because I think that may have been smaller, and maybe I'm even reaching. Okay. Because I'm a I, I get a little nervous kind of putting that on you because none of that may be true. But I know the part about me is that there's this. Uh, you know, I took it personally that you didn't want to talk to me. You didn't want to talk to me about this. Like there was some. Uh, what was the last thing you read? Because the word was an abandonment, but there's definitely well, an abandonment thing. Well, the thing, yeah, that comes a little bit later, and and that's a that that's in play for ones, and definitely for me. You know, if you look at um, my childhood, and it's like, okay, my dad wasn't there. I got a I got a great relationship with my dad now. I I don't like throwing him under the bus, but you know it 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 happened, and I think there was a seed of it. You know, I really respond to that of like if if you're asserting yourself or your point of view, and I just and I disappear. Am I going to be left behind, or am I going to in right. this conversation or 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 relationally? Really, it feels like a relational. Abandonment when well, he's not talking to me anymore. He's talking to them. It's like I might as well not even be here. Right. Well, okay. So it's crazy how we're about to address these exact the same things. But what I'll say is, I mean, first of all, so long as there is a camera on me, I am thinking about the audience for sure, right? And it also, in in a, in a negative way, being a three. Being a performer who actually has an audience, who actually has a camera on him all the time, right? If you, there's not a day that passes that you can't go on the internet and see something new that I'm in. So there is this image that exists of me that's been built over over a over a long time, over a decade, and it is. If I was only concerned about my personal health, like if that was, if the only motivation in life was personal health, I would stop all this. Uh, it, it, I, would, I would be like, I, I, need, I need to have no image, I need to have no social media, I need to have absolutely no interaction with an audience at all. I need to go to a monastery, 
shave my beard, shave my hair, <laughs> and live in a robe with a bunch of other dudes who kind of look exactly like me. Um, now, there's other things in life. I'm, I think what we're doing, <laughs> I think what we're doing creatively is awesome. I think that what we're doing as a company and the things that we want to do in the world are great. And I'm not going to, and don't worry, I'm not about to stop doing that. But I'm just saying that, so that's a constant thing that I'm thinking about and battling is my demons, right? But I think another big, I think one of the reasons that uh, I tend to, I mean, it, it differs, but. In this context, one of the reasons that I'll talk to the audience is be, is the same reason that when we did our deconstruction stories, I tended to kind of talk about the thought process that I had gone through and kind of talked about it in a persuasive way, even when I'm trying actively to not be persuasive and to try to bring you onto my team and try to get you to think like me, I tend to just present everything as if I'm trying to convince you of something. Yeah. Threes are the ultimate persuaders, right? And so we just can't help it. We speak in a persuasive way. Now, when it comes to the Enneagram, there's a practical side to it, which is you already know all this stuff, right? And so I feel like the audience is listening into a conversation about us and they're getting, they've been asking for this conversation about the Enneagram. You haven't been asking about it because you we've been talking about it on our own personally for years. So I think I tend to direct, and it's more direct my up. attention to the audience because it's just like, hey, this is, you know, this is new information for you. But let me read through the ways threes tends to find ones because it's gonna talk about what you just did and then I will tell you exactly the thing that I was hinting at earlier, which is kind of related to what you just said. Um, on the other hand, threes tend to find ones too rigid and judgmental in their attitudes and inflexible in various areas. While threes generally value one's organizational ability and ability to get things done, threes can feel that ones are too narrow-minded and methodical, too perfectionistic and focused on details rather than results. Mm -hmm. We don't need to get into that. You already know that that's, that's something that we talk about a lot, but threes may have issues with ones about feeling they are being stifled or judged both for their attitudes and for their actions. So I'll stop here. Because I think that that was the only issue I had with the last podcast was in my mind, what I had been doing throughout the conversation. And again, I'm not saying I don't fall into the trap of image management and I gladly readily admit that. It's, it's probably never gonna go away. But what I, But then I spent some time talking about like being in the feeling triad and being like, I know y'all don't think I'm a, I feel anything. You, I know y'all think I'm insensitive. I'm actually feeling a lot of things and I'm just coming to grips with the fact that I'm feeling all these things. And that was one of the things I spent some time talking about. And so then at the end of the conversation, you were like, seems like you were pretty concerned about like correcting some misconceptions about you, right? And you said, and so I, the way I felt in that moment was judged. Right, I was like, I made a yeah. decision to be vulnerable. Right, I made a decision to kind of go a little bit deeper and pull the curtain back in a way that's vulnerable and kind of exposing myself and saying that like, yeah, I have this inner performer who's constantly trying to put the best foot forward, who's feeling a lot of things, who's figuring these things out, who's going to therapy for these things. And then you kind of took the opportunity to be like, yeah, it seems like you're managing, managing your, image. your image right now. Right. And so, the ju the judgment, and I, yeah, and I I think that was my yeah. So, you know, I'm sorry for that because the one thing that I did think about because again on my car ride back I'm like, you know what? At that point where Rhett was like really getting worked up about how he doesn't feel like he's worthy, like I wish I would have said, "You're worthy." I wish I would have just stated it, and I felt like, yeah, this is another point where it's, um. I think I was I was being critical of like as we weren't the, the the episode wasn't going the way that I wanted to go conversationally. It was uh -huh. when the things get more presentational, it 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 doesn't um that's not a mode when I feel like I can contribute to making a good product. I can make a good episode. So I think there's some underlying things there that I was like, I, I was starting to get frustrated that like, uh, this isn't going well because it's just, 
We're not listening to each other. We're both just taking turns saying whatever we thought we needed to say about ourselves. And a good ear biscuit is when we connect with each other. And if we don't meet that criteria, I start to get frustrated. And I was like, he's not listening to me, but I'm also not listening to him. And it's just, you know, this must just totally suck. <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna throw something out there that is going to, uh, I think part of it was a, a dig because I was frustrated. And then part of it was a way to, at least it was like, I'll throw something juicy out there that he can respond to that'll that'll get us out of our notes. And it was so it was manipulative. Hmm. So, you know, I I tend when things don't go right, I tend to, like I said, sink sink my teeth and my claws into and start to control what's happening in order to right the ship, to fix things. Um uh, but I you know, I I'll admit there was like I was I was starting to like feel a little hurt, there was like some emotion there. And and again, it was like, that's not really, I think everything you said in explaining where you're com coming from with like how you were presenting information and stuff like that, m my growth is, in terms of our relationship, one of the things is trying to celebrate your strength even if I'm not an active part of it in that moment. Like if there's moments in a podcast where you can, play to the strength of, of presenting information and, and being persuasive or taking a risk and being vulnerable. That's actually what you were doing there, but my I was in such a headspace that by that point, I wasn't listening enough to appreciate that that's what you were doing. You know, I was, so I was kind of writing you off. All of these things were going on in my head, but it's not, and, I, and then it comes across as judgment. So the last thing I'm trying to say right now is, I admit that those things were, you know, I was judging the episode and I was I was also doing the other things I've already said. Uh, but you I, I understand you weren't you weren't do you weren't doing anything to dig me. Like whenever you look at your notes or you decided to address the audience directly, that like it's nowhere on your radar that that would hurt my feelings. And I also know it actually shouldn't hurt my feelings. It should be something that I should I should celebrate because it's at moments where we can lean into our strengths, we should both do that. You know? Yeah, and you know, to be clear, I the only reason I, I brought it up is is because of the way that it's so perfectly speaks. I think you should have I know, but I think you no, should have brought it up. Well, you can say that it hurt your feelings. Well, that no, could also did. that could also be a reason to bring it up. Well, no, it did because you because as you said, you took a risk, but, but and you're I, being vulnerable. I just want to be clear that it that it wasn't like I mean, this is a tendency. This is a tendency in our relationship and something that we have you know comes up from time to time where I'm like I kind of feel judged for thinking that or doing that in that way. But it, it, but it's also something that I'm very aware is a dy it's a personality dynamic. So I don't spend a lot of time like letting resentment build up. It was, it was more like, oh, this is actually as I read through this, I was like, this is a good opportunity to bring that up as an illustration. I'm not, yeah, of course. I'm, what I'm getting at is, yes, it hurt my feelings. It didn't hurt my feelings in to such a degree that I was like, apart from us doing this second part of the podcast, I would have never said anything about it. I think, but, I mean, right or wrong, I would have never said anything about it. I don't know that that's a good thing. So, I mean, you see, I, so I don't think that redeems anything. No. Uh, I actually think, I mean, don't you think growth for you is, the point, is, 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 is confronting me about it? Yeah, well, yeah, but the point, I guess the point is, is because that. Because that's getting in every, touch with those feelings. If every single time I felt judged by you, I said that hurts my feelings and brought it up. We would never get anything done, and, and which is exactly what's well, like. That's what it? I'm saying too. Every every single time that I feel like something you do, that uh, as a a side effect of it, that it it pricks my insecurities. You know, I shouldn't point that out to you, even because that's for me to work out. It's it's you're not doing anything wrong. But I think if if 
there there was a little part of that that got a little tense because maybe I was maybe I was doing something wrong. Ones tend to search for things to confess so that they can get the criticism out of the way too. So maybe I'm also doing that. Maybe. Um, but let me. I want to finish reading this paragraph. Three C ones critiques of them. Well, threes thrive on praise, but stressed ones are unable to give any credit to themselves, much less to anyone else. Mm -hmm. Three C ones critiques of them is nitpicking and time wasting. So again, I think yeah. one of the things that happens with me is if like you're gonna critique me or something like that, like what I did in the moment is you said, it seems like you're protecting your image or whatever, and I and I just owned it and said, yeah, I'm all about image management, I, which was kind of a joke, but also kind of a confession. Like, yeah, we've been talking about that. And yes, that is an element of what I've been doing. Um, but there's also, but there's, there's also a, a part of it that is just a general vulnerability. But it's the, 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 that's, the, that's the, crazy, the crazy internal battle is like, you make a decision to, it's just like I was talking about with meditation. The moment that I begin actually doing meditation in the right way and focusing on my breath and not being preoccupied with the thought is the moment that I begin observing myself doing that and giving myself a pat on the back and being like, look at you, look at you, all the, People who are watching you meditate right now, who which is no one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm constantly dealing with that on this on this podcast. As any, any conversation that I'm in, the moment that I choose to be, um, oh, it, perfect example. Like, um, you know, we had Christie's uh, birthday thing at your house, and Jesse had the idea, which was a very Jesse idea and a very two idea, which is let's go around and say things that we like about Christy. And yeah. some people are comfortable with that and some people are not. An I'm affirmation circle. I'm typically not comfortable with that. I'm 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 not I'm it, you would think that as a 3 I would be comfortable receiving it, but I'm also not comfortable receiving it in that context, right? Yeah. Because it feels unwarranted and it doesn't feel like I did anything to receive the praise. It just feels like y'all going to just sit here and tell me things you like about me? Yeah, because that's you're worthy without cuz I didn't do it. anything. Yeah. Right. If you want to talk about how good my paella was or something like that, it's like, okay, I'm okay with that. But you just want to talk about me. I'm not. So, but I have been in therapy. I have been, you know, I've been trying to address these things. And even before therapy, I was aware of some of these tendencies. I just couldn't label them and analyze them in, in the right way. But it was just like, okay, I want to say something about Christy that means something to Christy. But I also wanna say something about Christy that no one else says about Christy, right? I wanna say something that's unique and original about Christy. Um, and then in the moment of saying it, it's like there's two things happening. There's like I am enjoying being able to tell Christy the things that I appreciate about her because that's meaningful to her. She's enjoying this. She's not completely comfortable with it either, but she's got, she is becoming comfortable with it and as we go as we go around the circle and do it. But I'm also thinking, I wonder how that stacked up to what everyone else said. And then of course, when Science Mike went, it was just like, he's on another level of being able to deliver that. He's like in his absolute element. Oh yeah. Like he pulls things out in these affirm, if he wants to affirm he gave someone. An he gave three, three analogies. analogies. Like there was a sunrise analogy. A tree. A tree analogy and I don't know a wolf other. analogy? And a wolf. But the crazy thing is, I mean, is, in fairness, like, he did go last, which that was that was no, but like, and and of course, but he probably could have gone first. And, and what am I thinking in that moment? I'm like, damn, Mike is so good at this. I'll never be as good as he is at that. Well, sh I'm the one that everybody made fun of when it was over. <laughs> I mean, I think that my wife is hot and fun. <laughs> I mean. I could go into a lot of other things, and did I did well, I did I think about it the rest of the night? In her defense, yes. in her defense, you misspoke a little bit, and you were talking about when y'all met, and you said you were hot and fun. It's what you said, and I know that's not what you meant, but that's what everybody. Trust me, I know that's what everybody laughed. You know what, Christy <laughs> never said anything, but I've been. She knows you very well, and she knows how to appreciate the things that you have that you that you bring to the table. <laughs> She's so hot and fun now. Um, two, okay. Uh, but okay, getting into the- Well, the one, the one thing, that, like the very next sentence is, eventually threes start to avoid ones uh, because yeah. there's so much nitpicking and criticism, and that triggers one's abandonment issues. Which triggers more anger and criticism. Which yes. is exactly what happened during the podcast. Yes. So you felt like I was abandoning you by talking to the audience, and yeah. you judged me, 
It felt abandoned and then you criticized me. And and also, <laughs> but also my definition of a good episode is when we connect and they're just listening in. And I, you know, and plus I don't have, I don't work in that mode of talking to the audience. I'm, I don't feel like I'm good at presenting information. So it's like, I, then I'm, I'm left out. You are good at acknowledging and taking into account the audience in a lot of in different but, other other mediums. Like, okay, this is what what is the camera seeing right now? I'm going to look into this camera. It's like I'm kind of like I don't care about looking in that camera. Well, the the work that I'm doing on if we talk about Good Mythical Morning is like I believe that the show is its best when we are at most ourselves and c- connecting with each other and being as honest having the most honest fun we can have. But ironically, the more, so the more that I assert control, the harder that is to happen. Like when I can just go with the flow is 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 when it starts to work. Yeah. And um, so that's my work is reminding myself of that. I mean, if you, just a couple of notes I made about my, my growth is, uh, the more that I understand myself, it's like not taking those things too seriously, like using humor to to lighten up about my tendencies, my perfectionism. Um, so starting to harness those eccentricities for comedy uh, it allows me to acknowledge that it's a bit ridiculous and that it's a bit overboard and that it's that's what makes it funny. And so it disarms it some within within myself. And I actually think that you harness, in terms of growth, you harness your tendencies for comedy too when it's like, you know, the whole bullshit artist thing where like you're really just just making something up. And like that, that's, that's harnessing, that might be harnessing, um, you know, image management or just being able to present, that whole deceit thing, like it sounds so nasty, but you found a way to turn that into an, a comedic angle. And I, that's just something I thought of. I don't know how on the show or in terms of comedy, if there's if you're able to, to, to use that as your path for growth. Well, I, 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 well I'll talk, I don't necessarily think it's a path for growth, but I do think that the, um, the three's ability yeah, something I, w- I read in one of the books was that um, threes are the best of any of the uh, numbers at reading a room mm. and like knowing this is what's required in this space right now. To rise to the top. To rise to the top, right? Um, so one of the things that ends up happening is just like, I, I feel like I could hang out with anybody, any group of people and kind of assimilate, right? So there's one thing about sort of assimilating and then sort of figuring out what is the pecking order in this group. And again, this is a subconscious thing. This isn't something that I don't manipulate, you know, to have this like manipulative uh, strategic mindset. It's just you find yourself just, oh, I, oh, that's what happened. I saw when I got into that group. So I think in comedy, just the ability to uh, know the mode that we're in and again, like I have to commit to it, but if like, oh, I'm gonna commit to being this guy that doesn't believe that Finland exists, I can go, I can go all the way, right? And you might actually yeah. at the end think, maybe uh, Finland doesn't exist. <laughs> uh, a couple other things just, in terms of my growth in oneness, you know, they talk about a one can move to two, every number can move to two different numbers in growth. So a one can move forward. Well, to growth it. and stress. One is good and one is bad. Oh, okay. One is one is an integration. One is disintegration. Okay, so I can move forward to a four, and for me, that's pursuing artistic expression without evaluation. Right. You know, so I mean, we pursue so much artistic expression, but I evaluate all of it. So it's actually saying, well, I'm just going to sit over here and I'm going to doodle, just for the hell of it. And, and bad example, but you know, looking for those things, and then. Uh, talking about a one moving back to a seven, there is a positive spin um, on that to be growth, which is to reclaim a playful and spontaneous impulse of childhood, which 
again, I think that's that's kind of the best vibe of Good Mythical Morning when when I'm able to do that to to give myself freedom to say the best thing I can do here is to not control and not analyze and think about is everything in the right place on the desk? Is everything, is this moving at a fast enough pace or is this episode gonna be too long? When I start trying to be a producer, I'm doing other people's jobs and I'm no longer doing the job that only I can do which is be like unhinged me in the moment and, and, listening to and you I think everyone will agree that that's the, from an entertainment standpoint, that's the link that we all yeah, want. Yeah, yeah, and it's, so I know that my yeah. tendency is to not do that, so it's like, whether it's in GMM or in my entire life, just working hard to relax more, <laughs> you know, uh, make room for pleasure, don't fix things that don't need fixing, um, and, as we've talked about on other podcasts, treat myself with the same kindness and respect that I show to others and have this question in my mind of, do I wanna be right or do I wanna be happy? Mm -hmm. And, or even if I wanna make a really good product, that means letting go. I, it's it's great that we have a team and we've we've set up an environment where I can actually, like, if I'm the healthier I am, the better it is. Yeah, and that, that's what's so tricky as we talk about the the growth and the stress for a three. So for you, your growth, uh, for whatever reason, directly feeds into you being, uh, you know, more fun, more spo spontaneous, sp spontaneous, yeah, spontaneous, uh, spontaneous, and a, and beca you become a better performer. But my problem is being a performer, right? So that's why many entertainers are threes. Lots of actors are threes because they know how to get into a situation and assume an identity, mm -hmm, right? They're mm -hmm. masters at it. And so uh, they actually are rewarded in entertainment by detaching from their authentic self and becoming something that somebody else wants them to be. So that's the irony in what we do as entertainers is that I could actually be really good at our job and be very unhealthy because hmm. on the opposite end of the spectrum, so the disintegration, uh, sort of the stress arrow for a three is to go to nine. We become disengaged and apathetic, uh, which is like an unhealthy nine. And this doesn't happen many times in my life, but there are times when I feel so overwhelmed, so stressed out, and there's a, and a common, theme with threes is they've worked so hard that they become physically ill, right? That's why I went to therapy because of what was happening with my eye and my back and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but in, in, in integration and in growth, uh, threes become more cooperative and committed to others like healthy sixes. So again, threes tend to be just ruthlessly independent and not have time for people. We don't have time for relationships. We don't have time for people. Uh, and, and and this can be of great detriment to friendships and marriages, right? My wife. Because those are people, yeah. It, we're not, it looks like we're not gonna necessarily have time to talk about the threes and the how the three interacts with the twos, but I mean, you basic. Can, you can give them a little, we can give them a little bit of it. Um, okay, so twos. I mean, I is, cut the other one short because of the dentist. Two, two is what my wife is. So. Twos fundamentally feel that threes put work and career before them, their children and home life, primarily uh, primary values, values for twos. They feel that threes are too focused on success and that they are missing the really valuable things in life. Threes on the other hand can feel stifled by the twos insistence on the need to spend time together. Threes feel twos are smothering and emotionally manipulative, making them feel guilty for working hard and making the most of themselves. Now this is a generalization of course, but this is the thing that Jesse and I end up fighting about, right? Because again, I go on vacation and I'm not present. I'm not, it takes me three days before I can be present on a vacation. And even then, if you give me a little bit of time alone, I'm gonna be writing something. I'm gonna be coming up with an idea. I can't, it's just, I, and the, and I've talked to my therapist about this, and he's like, well, first of all, you don't need to judge your you don't need to judge yourself for going into creative mode if you're because you are also a naturally creative person, and that's something that brings you joy, and you're learning how to become even a better, 
more efficient channel at kind of receiving ideas and bringing them into the world. But you have to know when to turn that off and when to turn that on. And if it's specifically happening to the detriment of you being present with your wife and being present with your family, then it's a problem and you need to turn it off and focus on them. Because ultimately, like I said last, last time for me, it's I'm do, 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 and I need to be be, be, be. I need to be present. And specifically, and it's kind of ironic since I talked about this being the reason that I grew my hair out and what I was trying to do in therapy, and that was before I even really understood how important this was to a three. But this is from the wisdom of the Enneagram. The goal of a three is to connect with the heart. When they are able to reconnect with their hearts, healthy threes model the essential gift of authenticity like no other type. Their behavior becomes genuine, not trying to be more or less than they really are. They become simple and available, revealing their true selves with honesty and humility. Again, this whole idea of not being concerned with what you think and what the image is, not over -identi identifying with the image that I am projecting into the world and just be like, who actually am I? You know, we don't, three, a lot of times we don't even know what we want because we've, made a game of our entire lives of figuring out what you want and figuring out a way to, to bring it to you. And so I had to be able to stop and be like, I don't have to do anything right now. I can just be, I could be present. I could be in being present in relationship with the people that, you know, this going back to that six thing, being available, doing something for someone, not just doing something for someone because it makes me, like again, everything that I do I can make it about me or I can make it about you. I love to cook for people. I'm discovering that cooking for people brings me joy. When everyone is sitting there eating and they're like, this is great, it brings me joy, but the unhealthy, and there's a healthy service in that. It's like bringing joy to people and creating environments where people can have truly joyful experiences of eating food and having great company. That's all great, all positive. What I have to resist is that now you think something about me because I made this for you, right? That's the constant battle. But it doesn't mean don't do things for people. In fact, the more I can, in, in fact, the more you can choose to do things for people where it involves kind of folding in and doing something that's not about bringing attention, where you're not doing something special, where it's just like, hey, I'm just going and building this house with these folks, and I'm do, I'm I'm got a hammer, and that guy's got a hammer, and no one's. No one's in charge. I mean, there's another person who's in charge. It's not me. Mm -hmm. So kind of folding in and, and being with people, serving alongside people, those are things that are good for me to kind of get out of that performance mentality. Um, was there anything else in relating to Jesse? Because I think it's, you kind of you kind of hit him, maybe. I mean, I the, the one thing that we've always talked about is how Jesse is sort of the personal personable one in our relationship. And I kind of a long time ago was like, Jesse's gonna be the one who's gonna like talk to people. And you know, if we have somebody staying with us, like she'll stay up and talk to him. I'll go, I'll go to bed because somebody's gonna do it. And mm -hmm. it's like twos in particular bring a more personal individual focus to their interactions with others. They are thoughtful and follow up exchanges with genuine kindness and compassion. Threes bring flexibility, charm, practicality, and goal oriented vision for ways the couple can improve. Twos like to feel proud of their loved ones, and threes want to make their partner proud. I think you, you know, you have a good, you have a, that's the, you throw a good party for that reason. Yeah, you know, and, and it, it, the the two, the two three combination is like the most um, socially. I don't know what the word was, but basically, exactly what you just said. They're going to be the couple who's going to throw a party. And everyone's gonna have a good time because the two, both the two and the three are both image conscious, and so they're actually thinking about how good is the party that we're gonna throw. And if you've got two people who are committed to each other in this way, where it's like, you know, we're going to do an awesome party for everybody, and it might there might be some unhealthy motivation in there, which is because people will think we're great. The benefit to being friends with twos and threes is that well, there's gonna be a great party. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying. Right, um, for me and Christy, she's a six. Uh, so ones and sixes both excel at analytical thinking and both worry about things going wrong. Um, 
ones tend to feel anxious about making mistakes and sixes tend to feel general anxiety related to many things uh, potentially going wrong in life. So for Christy, she gets worried about the things that she can't control and I, I only worry about the things that I can control. I've got an assignment, I've got a test, I've got this thing I need to do. Planes, uh, Christy hates planes because she has no control and there is a she can she can visualize a worst case scenario even if the movie playing on the plane is not about a plane crash she can she she's watching it right um but for me i love plane flights because there's nothing i can do right and, and i ignore the fact that there's wi-fi on a plane now like i don't even want to have wi-fi i love the fact that you put me in this shell where it's like for x number of hours i can't do anything i'm just like I'm not being measured to anything. I'm sitting here and I can I can read, I can listen, I can think. I think so freely on a plane. And then I'll look over at Christy and she's like shaking. This is a great idea for if not a book, like how each number approaches a flight. There's so much in that because the oh, way yeah. a three approaches a flight is I'm like, okay, I'm flying across the country. I got four and a half hours. What, what am, am I gonna, I gonna write? accomplish? You know what? What can I come up with right. in this four and a half hours? And, and it, I'm like, and if I, I can, re- I can finally relax. And if I make the choice to watch the movie and not write, I think that I'm worthless. I feel bad about myself. Um, <laughs> and also, I don't talk to anybody next to me. Whereas a two, Jesse, she'll start the, she'll start a conversation with somebody. I'm like, oh shit, she's talking to somebody. Yeah, for <laughs> I mean, Christy and I both is have a strong sense of duty and honor. We like showing up on time, we like following the rules. We l- both love um, organization and cleanliness, having our house in order. A, l- a lot of these very practical things about putting our lives together systematically, um, it, she has a, it, it gives her a sense of security and, and it gives me a sense of, um, Control that, like this is right. I I can I can perfect this because I'm con- I can control it, and so that really plays out really well practically. We don't argue about those things like a lot of those pet peeves at home type stuff. We're almost always on the same page, and you know I was giving myself a hard time of like um, not allowing myself to just just fall in love with Christy and that be enough for us to be together. I was so I had to have all the right answers and um, be able to, to defend my decision to propose with data. But it, I do think I was picking up on our compatibility as ones and sixes when it comes to a lot of the practicalities, yeah. the things that we'll argue about. Um, now, ones will come to decisions quickly because we're more sure of ourselves and our opinions and tens, sixes tend uh, to be unsure because there's so many things that could go wrong. So there's yeah. there's this indecisiveness. Um, sixes bring a warmth and more emotional responsiveness and availability. So there is a bit of that like what, what you, you were describing with you and Jesse, there's some of that with me and Christy too in terms of like, uh, that emotional responsiveness and um, being able to being able to be warmly connect with people, yeah, is is something that she really helps me with. Um, but sharing burdens and chores that's totally equal. Um, both are steadfast, loyal, and faithful to each other, wanting to build a solid foundation together. Both can count on the other, and that gives both of us room to relax. Um, and but. Sometimes my criticisms can fuel uh, her six insecurities right. in our relationship. So there's there's in the same kind of like our dynamic, I can kind of push her away with perceived criticism, right? Even more to myself, but it's people it's, only hear the it's, way it's, it's perce- comes up. No, it's perceived as a threat, so we have to work through. Well, that. Well, you talk about the whole like initial sort of attraction uh, compatibility thing, and again, not to say that any number can be compatible. Can, can compatible. I mean like some are gonna be more challenging. If you're both eights, like that's gonna be a challenging relationship. I mean, but there's all kinds of different challenges. Two and a three, so Jesse tells the story. So again, the three is the performer and the two 
is the the helper. And again, there's better ways to describe that, but that's how it's often described. Um, one of the ways that this sort of works out is the three loves being in the spotlight and the two loves having someone who's in the spotlight that they can put into the spotlight. And Jesse remembers uh, pretty much the one of the first times we ever interacted with each other. You know, we had met like at church one time or, or, or whatever. But I ended up inviting her up to the Campus Crusade meeting, which I was emceeing, mm -hmm. and I knew I would be emceeing it. And not only that, it was one of those uh, it was one of those those times where we had made a video where it was me. F going and finding Greg somewhere on campus and like bringing him into the thing. Yeah. And uh, and so there was this video that played and then I like danced down the aisle and then took the microphone and started speaking to everybody. And she tells the story of like, that's very attractive to a two. This guy just came in and like performed for a few hundred people and danced down the aisle and then took the thing and started doing a monologue. And <laughs> that was like the moment that she started to fall in love with me. Good, bad, or indifferent, what the reasons are, but like she was attracted to that. And then once I saw the way that she responded to me exerting myself in, the, in, in those places, I was like, oh, she likes this she's specifically. My fan. She yeah, exactly. She's a she is a fan of what I'm doing and she appreciates it, right? And again, there there's it could this could seem very shallow, but it there's actually this whole idea of the two. So you a, a, this this is like a, a lot of political honestly, a lot of political couples are the politician is a three and the mm. spouse is a two. Um I'm, I think Barack and Michelle are are, are, are this combination, but the, but the, but the the. Um, I thought Michelle was a one. Yeah. So maybe they're not. No, she's a, maybe she's a three. But yeah. the uh, they may both be threes. <laughs> but the uh, this has been a source of strength in our relationship. But the thing that has been a source of strife at the same time is the fact that twos actually also want to be. The center of attention, right? And Jesse is Jesse was a performer, like she she was she was on stage. She's always been a performer, and so there is a resentment that can build um, when you get into a relationship, and the three continues to sort of exert themselves and kind of be in the spotlight, and the two is doing a, is loves the fact that they've got somebody who's in the spotlight, somebody they can be proud of, and somebody that they can keep pushing into the spotlight. And first of all, as I've said many times. Jesse was is a huge reason that I'm doing what I'm doing. She directly encouraged me to pursue this career, and along the way has kind of directed a lot of the decisions that I've made. And but she but, can also tweet. But she wants she. But as a two, she wants credit for that. Naturally, oh, she wants yeah. she wants credit for that. And so if it gets to a point where I feel if I start to be like, well, I'm the one who's doing all the cool stuff and you're supporting me in that, and that's actually the way that I would communicate that, then the relationship begins to disintegrate. We both have to give each other our props, in other words, you know, in a, in he, in a, healthy, a healthy way, and if we don't do that, then these, th these can become very toxic. That's where the, the, the two and the three becomes very toxic if they're competing, if they're competing for attention, and they're both unhealthy. Hmm. Thankfully, we we've, we've been aware of this dynamic and we and have been able to harness it and and uh and Jesse of course is also in therapy and dealing with all her own shit too and so we both are able to um you know have a healthy marriage for 20 years Michelle Obama is a 1 by the way and Josh Groban is a 2 oh so this is the Josh Groban Barack Obama Relationship. I don't. I can't remember. There's there's a two three relationship that is in some book, and I can't remember who it is. Um. Okay. We sh we should wrap this up, huh? We did it. We did the enneagram episode. I've got a wreck. Um. There's you know it's, so much of this enneagram stuff can be the test, and it can be pretty heady. And I wanted to recommend uh, an episode of a podcast called Sleeping at Last. Sleeping at Last is the moniker of according to his website, Chicago-based singer-songwriter, producer, and composer, Ryan O'Neal. Um, he's friends of friends, but we've, we've never met, and maybe it's better that way. This, um, this dude, he, he 
he has all these series on his podcast, which again is Sleeping at Last, but he had a sub-series where he wrote a song for each hmm, number of the Enneagram. And you can, as you're digging into this, if you want more of an artistic processing, something that's kinda, it's more heart first than kinda head first way to approach it. Um, the first song he wrote, I mean it was back in October of 2017, so if you just search Sleeping at Last and then Enneagram and your number, the, the episode will pop, will pop up. But the one, it, what, it, Jenna? Elvis Presley is a three and Priscilla was a two. Oh, Elvis and Priscilla. <laughs> okay, so Elvis and Priscilla, that worked out well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if, if you start sleeping at last, Enneagram and your number, like for me one, it'll pop up and the song that he wrote, it, I hadn't listened to it in a couple of years, Every time I go back and listen to it, like, you know, I don't like using the phrase, but like, I feel so seen. Like, it taps into the emotionality of your number in a way that, like, even sitting here on the website and just reading the lyrics to myself, I can just feel my throat start to close up like I'm about to burst into tears. Well, I was on the treadmill at the gym with a lot of people. And Jesse was like, oh, you gotta listen to the, he just yeah. released the three song. I put the three song on. It's amazing. I was weeping on the yeah, treadmill. I, I'm starting it, to just it, tear it, up right now, and, and, tapping and, back and, into and it. Not only is it incredible music, uh, but, and I think the three is the best song, uh, <laughs> but, but also, um, Everyone who contributes musically on each song is that Enneagram number. Well, the, the, he goes through the entire process. It's crazy. And it, he's, so it, everybody who sings such and a plays cool, on a three song is a three. It's such and, a cool process. But again, it's like a different way into experiencing, it's so such an empathetic treatment of your number to feel like you're known and accepted for and who you are. it's another way to know, it's another way to begin to discover what you are. If you burst into tears, you probably will, it's you. If, you re, if you read the lyrics and you understand the lyrics, listen to the song, and it's like, that's me? You're probably that number. Hashtag Ear Biscuits. Um, appreciate all the Enneagram conversation that's happening using that hashtag. So uh, let us know how, you, how you're responding to this and you know, I I feel I feel good. I'm not going to analyze this thing because, well, because I already have, and I feel great about this episode. I feel like at the end of every episode could be linked. Are, are you cool with this one? And I would I would have an answer for you. Uh, this one's a plus, man. You can make all the comments you want. About and it this. redeemed the last one, which I gave a D to, and I shouldn't have but I'm gonna resist the urge to go read the comments because I don't wanna find my self-worth in your approval. Oh, snap. <laughs> we'll talk at you next week. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best. 